So let's talk a little bit about um, what this is all about. My name is Berta Foster. I'm hosting. Michelle Lalonde is assisting me uh, along with Andreas to be able to uh, describe the technical pieces. And then there's other people here that will help you with other aspects of what it takes. You know, to raise a community, it, it takes a group from Storm. Many people don't know a lot about Storm, but we're a 25-year-old company. And uh, we've been doing work in the rural area around Ottawa since 1996. Our CTO is one of the original founders. I've been personally involved since 2003. And uh, Andreas, how long have you been here? Since, uh, since 2001. Yeah, so you predate me by a couple of years. I was, I was a customer in, in 1999 and uh, got an opportunity to join, join the, the investors of Storm at the time. And we took it private, private out of international data caching at the time. So we have more than 10,000 customers. Um, we do both residential and commercial. Um, everybody on this call is probably residential as a service. And uh, we're totally ha happy to help whatever we can do to solve the problem of how do you need internet. Our coverage is pretty, uh, pretty uh, big. Um, so if you look at those little bubbles on that map, that map is a Google Earth map of the Ottawa area. Every one of those bubbles is one of our antennas and it has a bunch of people connected to it. And that doesn't include the, the DSL or the, or the cable customers. Um, in addition to that, occasionally we get to chat with people. The person on the, on the right is uh, Eric Duncan. Eric Duncan is the MP from Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry. I come from Chesterville. I've known Eric for many years. He came into our offices earlier this year. We uh, chatted about the challenges of finding funding for doing the rural internet that we're actually doing. And he is actually working to see what he can do to help us with some of the things that we're trying to do, both in SD&G, which is his writing, but across the whole area, because he realizes how important it is. We believe in a community approach. So our team actually goes out and climbs towers and builds radios and points things at different areas on different lakes. And uh, what we're trying to do is solve a challenge for the community. And we collaborate with the community, the campgrounds, to be able to solve the problem, as opposed to being an individual solution like Starlink. We're actually trying to serve a whole group of people. So as an example, we're doing, in Leonard Kylands, uh, we're doing 96 fiber to the, uh, to the home installs this summer. And if you were to try to do that with Starlink, only 40 people could get chosen because that's all Starlink can support inside a 10 click radio. So that's one of the things that people don't get is that, you know, it, well, it seems magic, it works really well if you're the only guy in your block. So let's talk a little bit about White Lake and, and what's going on in White Lake. You may notice that uh, in White Lake, we have a group of nodes and each one of those pie shaped things or circles is uh, coming off one of the towers we have. Since we put those in, what's new in our solutions kit is that we can actually do fibered towers. So it turns out that one of our towers that we have access to is now fibered and it's feeding the backbone for all this right now. We also have a thing called an air fiber. It allows us to bring, just think of it as multiple gigabytes coming in across the air because we license a link between point A and point B. And then there's some things that are new to Storm, which are the 5010s and the 255 antennae. And uh, we are actually started to roll them out last fall for residential and commercial. Um, normally with commercial to get higher speeds, we did point to point and maybe 100 to 100. Um, so 100 down and 100 and 100 up would be symmetrical. 50 down and 10 up will do most people's houses really well. And 25.5 will actually let you run probably four um, Netflix at the same time. So it just depends on how much you really need. What we do is we look at the locations for upgrades. So here we are actually doing about a 200, well, sorry, 100 upgrades this year we did over the pandemic, we've done 200 upgrades um, total, so about 100 a year. And what we do is we look at places where people are asking. So Jason Riddick has this thing we call the black stars. And what happens is if somebody asks for service and we can't meet the service need they have, Jason puts you as a star on the map. He takes a GPS location of wh where your address is and sticks it on the map and makes it so that we know what's going on with that particular area and we know that there's an issue. So what happens is when there's enough black stars, he comes to us and we talk about what would it take to actually service those stars? What, what's the investment required and what, what kind of revenue? Then we verify the, the, uh, the requirements from various people. And then in this particular case, because you're in, in a campground area, we have to understand seasonal versus full-time so that we can actually go and calculate the investment required. 
So that's basically our process. Michelle, maybe you want to talk to this map. Okay, so just to indicate how White Lake is being fed today, uh, we're coming from um, the quarry up in uh, Murray Hill, and then from there going to Middleville, then to Union Hall, so where the main, main backbone is. So you're pretty far from our main fiber backbone. So it, it's limited. And anyway, it comes up to a farm up on the hill. You probably all know where it is, the silo. And then it feeds into White Lake on multiple towers. So it basically describes how the wireless links connect White Lake up. And Andreas, maybe you want to talk to this one. This is just a, a rep representation of all the client radios that are connected to our, our main distribution nodes and how we feed them crisscross across the lake because um, the topology is, is pretty pretty hard to, to feed with, uh, with, with uh, normal distribution uh, because of the line of sight. So this is, uh, this is how we, uh, we map it in our system. And, and we have done some things in campgrounds. Maybe Michelle, you want to talk a little bit about some of the campground work we've done over the last couple of years, especially the stuff where if you can get your, your campground owner to, uh, to put a conduit in, we can do amazing things. Yeah, so campgrounds have been an interesting thing. We, we've joined the Ontario Campground Association five, six years ago and learned that campgrounds are very unique where we have different models. We have a hotel model where the owner purchases equipment and gives Wi-Fi out. He may sell that with a plot of, with a trailer. Uh, there's the um, subdivision model where Storm looks after the infrastructure in the park and sells direct to customers. And so, and there's a few other models like uh, fiber to the trailer that are, are starting to pop up. So that's uh, whenever a campground owner decides to change his hydro or his water system, it's a perfect time to uh, introduce cabling on the trailers uh, spots. So then we, uh, we go through a, a process to go figure out what we need to do. So we take a look at all these pieces and probably it's uh, an Andreas question. On the engineering side, we need to assess the number of wireless hops uh, to our current fiber pop, which is at Union Hall, and then design the, the path to either eliminate hops by bringing, uh, bringing a new fiber pop closer or replacing existing wireless hops with licensed links. Uh, licensed link is essentially a fiber through the air because the latency is very low and it's very high capacity. We then look to the current distribution sites that we have in White Lake area to see how best to upgrade them. The wireless distribution technology we use today will require a line, line of sight to achieve up to 5010 speeds. This may also require Storm to grow some of our existing towers in the area to help improve the line of sight for the customers. Um, however, there will be some cases where some, some clients will still need to build some towers to, uh, to achieve the line of sight. And then part of what we also look at is what's our total cost for helping you get installed. And so it obviously, as you guys all know, if you've filled up lately, it costs us truck rolls, which of course means that we actually have to roll a truck to come and install you, which is why we like doing campgrounds because often we can do like five, six installs in a day because we just walk next door. Whereas if, if you're, if we have to come back, it costs a bunch of money to do it. So we have, we kind of put together a two tier pricing. One is while we're right there, this is your special price. And then if we have to come back, it'll be more. So here's an example of a tower. We recently built a tower in North Lancaster. It's a 200 footer. So it sits well above the trees in lots of places, but not everywhere. Once you can see, if you can see the tower, because a lot of the work we do is line of sight. If you can see the tower, you can connect to it. And then we stick a little radio on your house and we run a wire down in, in, into your house, or in some cases, it's a trailer because it's a campground. And what comes back from that, this is the new technology that we rolled out last, last fall and boom, over 50 and 10, over 10. So it's 50 down and 10 up. This is an actual speed test of, of a customer that, that tried out the, uh, um, the uh, they were our beta test customer. Actually. One of the things that uh, Jason has done is he's put together a survey for all the areas of who's full-time, who's seasonal, what speeds do they currently have? So Jason, do you want to talk a little bit to this or? Yeah, so currently uh, we have 142 customers connected to all of our nodes, which are the internet towers around that portion of White Lake. Uh, of those 142, 74 are seasonal, meaning that uh, half the year they put their account on a suspension. So the service portion is turned off. And then when they come back in the spring, we just reactivate it remotely. 
And then as you look on the right side of the chart, uh, the three slash one, five slash one, those are the packages that the customer is on, either because that's the fastest that they could get due to the sector and the node that they're connected to, or because that's the package that they chose. So there are customers that are choosing to be on the slower speeds uh, because they don't use it as much as a family. And then we have the fastest is the 10 uh, over five, which is the 10 down five up. So that's the current in this area. However, yeah. you have actually done a survey to figure out who needs more. So if you feel the need for speed and you tell Jason, he puts it on a chart like this. So far, of the 142 customers, uh, we've had 31 inquiries for faster speeds, and we've kind of determined where they are based off of those nodes. Um, and we've inquired, or we've had three inquiries uh, from non-customers that uh, would only sign up if we had faster speed. So part of this is if you wanted higher speed and you haven't talked to Jason, we don't know you exist, which means we cannot do a business case. So what we're going to do is we're going to suggest that the best thing we can do is find out who runs the Lake Association. Is there a per is there somebody on this call that runs the Lake, the Lake Association? No. Does anybody know who runs the Lake Association? All right, let's Dale's, get Dale's uh, raising his hand. Hi, um, no, I, I'm not um, on the association, but I am um, one of my direct neighbors, and I know the people who are. And uh, just as a backdrop, really disappointed in the few numbers that we have on this call. I would have expected we had more. I will contact, uh, uh, and, and Jason, I've spoken to you. We, we've put up a tower and different things. Um, I will speak to the association president and um, I will contact Jason after and uh, you can use me as a conduit to provide any information I can get to the association. Yeah, if there's I can 14 offer people that. on this call plus this, there's 14 on the call plus the seven of us from Storm. Yeah. Uh, that's I've, I've spent my life in I, network. Yeah, I, I just want to, I've spent my life in networking and I get called by so many neighbors to come and help them out with various computer networking issues. And uh, that's why I'm disappointed in the, in the lack of numbers. I would have expected there's more just based upon the numbers of people I've spoken to. So well, I think that's the end of my that comment. But... So we do have one hand up and it's Glenn Scott. Okay, yeah, so number one, yes, I, I'm an IT guy as well. I, because of pandemic, I'm one of the people stranded working from home which I love and I'll never go back to an office, thank you. Um, but definitely want higher speed internet and more than willing to, I was hoping more people would join as well. Uh, part of the problem is, is the White Lake Property Owners Association, a thousand members, but it's a lot of, some seasonal people in there obviously, but a lot of the distribution lists are all DC seats, so you don't actually know who's on the groups. And I know for a fact some of the campgrounds may or may not have sent out a notice to any of their seasonal guests to say, hey, by the way, we're looking at doing this. So my only comment is, number one, people want higher speed internet. Um, there is a number of Starlink customers located nearby. I think there's a number of customers that got fed up and left and went to other providers that are coming available. So I think there's an opportunity, potentially a loss to Storm if they don't do something. I'm also very interested, um, obviously, I. Thank you for having an MPP on the call um, because I know the federal government is contributing more in the last budget to rural internet connection. It's no longer considered a luxury. It's now considered an essential item. So that's great. Um, in my case, because I need it for, pers for business use, I'm more than willing to even contribute more if it was available. Like I'm even a one-time fee. Like I'm willing to dish out a thousand bucks for a Starlink system. If I could get one, you can't. And to your point, there's very limited range right now. The satellite, there's only one satellite over this region. My neighbor had Starlink and had to give it up because every time the satellite moved, it's not geosynchronous, every time it moved, he would have line of sight obstruction from trees. It's a problem. I'd rather deal with Storm if it means paying one-time fee to say, hey, if you want 500 bucks to help contribute to your upgrade or whatever, hey, not even an issue. If you want to increase my fee from 90 bucks to 120 bucks, don't care. I just need the service. It's it's like he can't work with one person. Like at home right now, if I'm on the internet and I'm in a Zoom meeting, and heaven forbid we actually get to see a grandchildren who comes up and wants to watch Netflix, I can't work anymore because <laughs> they just it, it just gets too choppy. I have to turn off video. I have to turn off everything I can in the house. So 
I'm really, really interested in upgrades. I really just want a timeline. And, you know, anything you need to do to help to justify your business case, reach out. Let like The point is, I think that some people said they would switch, might if it was available. That was my only comment. And certainly, oh. Sue Monroe is our president. She was the one who actually sent it out to the association for the call. So that's why there are more people on this call. But I think there's a business case, I hope. I don't know. Like, I, I jokingly say the Campbell Side Road Tower you talked about, it's got 25 megabits there. So I guess cows need higher speed internet at the farm than we do at our homes. <laughs> That's the part that I find frustrating. It sounds like the fire hall is a major node, and I have direct line of sight to the fire hall on Three Mile Bay. So what's it take to upgrade that fire hall to 25 megabit? So at least we can get 25, and if we can get 50, that would be a dream. And I know uh, Bell keeps bugging us. They are apparently bringing Wi-Fi closer, but it's just not here yet. I, I just wanted to make some comments as well. Um, my name is Arlene Walker, but my husband and I moved uh, to White Lake um, last year. And as uh, with the previous caller, Glenn, um, I work from home, and I, I'm on uh Webex calls all day long, and I had had storm out twice. I paid my forty nine fifty for the site um, um, review, and I, and you guys have been very active in calling me. Um, and I say every time you call, you've been out here. Unless there's a tower upgrade, I, I I can't get the speed I need to work from home. So the last time you came out to see me, the fella said, "Well, you know, if we remove some of your." Uh, waterfront trees and 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 then we put the satellite dish on the waterfront and then you'll just have to bury the lines and you might get 10. I mean, that's just not acceptable. So what I do right now is I have a Rogers uh, cell phone and I hotspot um, on my cell phone and, and I, I work all day um, on my computer. I have unlimited data and 50 gigs of high speed, which is okay. But I, I'm on Starlink. You know, I paid my $129 and I just, um, I, I'm like the other caller, Glenn. I, I'm desperate. My husband and I are desperate. We can't watch Netflix. I have to download movies or a DVD or I have a, a cable package with Bell, but it's just, won't give me the internet I need. So I'm like the other caller. I'm happy to contribute some money. If You know, I, it obviously would depend on how much, but, you know, I could certainly take my unlimited data money from my cell phone and put that towards a monthly fee and plus others, you know, if we need to get towers in and enough of us want to b build a tower or this um, air fiber that was discussed earlier. I mean, I'm I'm happy to look at options, uh, and we're very interested. Good evening, everyone. I uh, just wanted to echo what uh, Glenn said, um, and as far as Arlene said, so yeah, just to depend on it, uh, living, work work from home, work from like, uh, and would be willing to contribute to infrastructure. Um, we'd have to see what that model looks like, but uh, just willing to contribute to infrastructure. Thank you. I know some of you guys worked on the Eon project 2010 through 2015, bars, those. And also I was a director on the board and I sort of consult with the folks here on high speed rural internet. I consulted for that for a while. Some questions network based. Uh, I did have storm in the past. Robustness was always a concern with networks going down. What changes will you be making to improve everything? And another question that tags onto that a little bit is with the fire hall, there's some talk about the service disappearing. And is there any jeopardy with that tower in that building remaining to use the power? And then uh, eventually wow. to Jason, when you get to your survey, what people are interested in too, I know a couple of folks have talked here, they work from home, they require certain bandwidth, but what will the structure be for price and the quality of service, the greatest service, everybody's moving towards streaming. So how do you provide that in your survey so people can understand what the costs are as to the service they're getting? So a bunch of questions for you. We initially built uh, White Lake in 2009-ish, I believe, something like that. The trees are much higher today. So they grew for 20, for a bunch of years. So there is uh, some of the nodes that are, are pretty short right now. So to deploy our 5010 product, we need to get better light of sight. We need more height. So there's an evaluation we need to do at White Lake to see either we erect towers in different places, depending on where the demand is, or we grow the, what's the assets there now. And so, I mean, some, some of them like are, are on the dock, on the side of a dock, because all we needed to do is shoot across the, the lake to the shoreline on the opposite side. 
So that could be upgraded as well, or we could put more of those. So that's the kind of thing we're looking at. We haven't evaluated what that all is. We know White Lake needs to grow. White Lake, uh, the main tower, the fire hall, was a bit short after a few years. So we were bad application on somebody's part, but it, it, it can't grow the way it is. It needs to be rebuilt from scratch. So there's a lot of things we need to evaluate on how we're going to be able to deliver 5010, which is what our model is this year, is 5010 everywhere. So White Lake's a little bit tougher. There's more counting of the assets first. Part of the, uh, part of the challenge with, with all of these areas are the trees group. So if you don't have a good arborist that will help top the trees to, to bring them down and get us five more years, then we actually do have to rebuild the tower. And um, by the way, just so you know, uh, steel basically doubled in the last year, where a lot of the tower segments went from like 125 to 210 for a tower segment. So that's a pretty big, big increase. Somehow the pandemic affects that. I'm not sure exactly how that fits, but there it is. As far as the upgrades, there will be shortened links um, coming from the uh, from Union Hall. Uh, the link from Murray Hill to to James Camp was considerable. It's uh, 20 kilometers. The shorter the links are, the more reliable they are. Um, and we'll be, we we've already added robust UPS backup at uh, White Lake because of the power issues in the area. It seems that whenever there's a storm, the power goes out quite quite regularly in, in the White Lake area. So we added additional barrier backup. That uh, should improve reliability. Yeah. Um, so, so we had a, a a problem at our location. I find that where I live on Lakeshore Road and Sny Road area in White Lake, that most of the signals are coming from the back of the properties. Most of the properties face the lake, and we we were coming through the back, and of course, um, all of the low frequencies were be uh, signals were already being consumed. And I couldn't get a higher frequency because of the foliage on the trees. So I had to put up a large tower and point over Harwood Island into, I think here it was the W3 tower, which was a direct line of sight. And I think to get the speeds that you're talking about, you need the higher frequencies. Is that correct? It'll have to be five gigahertz to, to get the faster speeds. Yeah. And, and so it almost makes sense that you would have towers that, um, are on the lake side rather than on the back side, and more people would have a easier line of sight and not be restricted by the tree foliage as the trees grow or the existing higher trees. Just a comment. Um, I know I, I'm. We're running a 10-1 service, and uh, I'm so happy when I phone. I always talk to a representative, and that's not very often. And I have very consistent sometimes low latency signals but most of the time we have no problem at all i would like to have faster but uh you know and and so i'm willing as well as others to contribute to that whole scheme i remember when the tower went in um over at the fire hall and i remember thinking that uh boy it's it's not going to be very long until those trees are up kind of blocking the, that tower and uh and here we are um one thought that i had um you're shooting from was it union to campbell's uh farm and then from campbell's farm to the white lake fire hall given that i guess really you have to replace that tower at the fire hall you can't just make it taller um because structurally it wouldn't support if you need to put a new base in and build a, a taller tower um, just to um, service what you currently have uh, because the trees are really uh, obscuring that antenna at this point. But is there a possibility that that tower would be high enough that it would eliminate the need to shoot back to Campbell Side Road and then back to the Union Station or whatever it is? Could it not shoot from that um, White Lake Fire Hall straight back and eliminate the hops, I guess, is what uh, Andreas was referring to. Would that be a way to eliminate uh, a couple of hops or something? So the original plan was to shoot from Union Hall to uh, Murray Hill, which is the large tower at the quarry, to White Lake directly. However, the line of sight to White Lake from Murray Hall, uh, Murray Hill Tower is not there. There's no line of sight. Uh, we initially installed it at uh, minus, like the, a very high signal. So we had to, to uh, shoot to a high point, which is the um, Campbell's farm. Uh, and then, then we can shoot back down to where White Lake is. 
So that's that was uh, that happened in 2009 where we had to make a, a correction. There is a possibility um, if we were to build a hundred footer at on the opposite side on Cedar Cove, uh, it would have line of sight to um, Murray Hill directly, and that would eliminate that hop, and okay. then we would shoot and back shoot back to the original tower. And Murray Hill does have uh, it's on net right now with fiber, right? We, we do have the ability of turning on a fiber at Murray right. Hill, so it would just be one hop from fiber, and we do have it connected to another tower that's uh, that's fed with the licensing currently today. So uh, an option would be to turn on another air fiber to, or license link to Murray Hill from where it's fed currently, so it would just be one hop from fiber as well. So, so the thing is that technology has changed and improved in the last dozen years or so, and, uh, and so it is possible that we can re-architect this to provide better service. But we need to know that whatever investment we put into it is going to be supported by the community because without the community support um, it, there, there's you know if you look at it and just do, do the math on how many uh, full-time equivs there are here you, you basically have let's say um, 35 plus plus 68 um, so so you're really about a hundred uh, people not the 142 because we only get revenue for half a year because everybody you know lots of people turn themselves off for the winter so if you're suspending service we don't have enough revenue perhaps so that's uh that's something to have a chat about um to see whether that actually works for you guys we we really do want to serve serve the lake and uh make sure that we're providing uh things people want the thing that needs to happen is is we need the support of the community we we're willing to collaborate with the community but we do need that support tony the the, the backbone stuff the wireless link between towers is not the major problem we have. It's more the distribution nodes that reach the customers. Those have to be nice line of sight. As far as the towers are concerned with the backbone link, we could always jig something, but it's reaching the end user is, is, uh, is, is the tough part that has to have line of sight to get those speeds we want to be able to do. And, and that's, why the that's why the diagram looks like this, is because we feed a node and the node feeds back usually onto the opposite shore. The final solution might be more zigzagging across the lake. It, it, it might just be that because once we start uh, developing the map of where the demand is, we'll see if we have to introduce short nodes off a dock like you have, Tony, uh, or, or bigger towers. We don't need yeah, just to correct the node that I have, I poured a concrete slab and there's a, a boat. It's not actually on the dock. That's right. It's a shoreline, let's call it. Yeah, it's on the shore. Yeah. And there was somebody else who had a hand up, but I've lost my hand. Just, just one comment up front to say that um, I, I'm, I have the 10-1 service. I'm located on Sny Road. Actually, I'm right across from Cedar Cove, and I've been very happy with the, the service. But having said that, um, I'm certainly interested and willing to support um, upgrade for faster uh, service. My other comments regarding the upfront cost, there's friends of ours who live or who are building actually on um, La Course. Uh, they're they're going to be across from, um, well, it's on La Course across from Hardwood Island. Uh, I know they've been quoted a, a significant cost uh, from Storm to install a tower, I think in the neighborhood of almost $10,000, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, to get access. I'm just curious, with some of the upgrades that you're discussing or contemplating here, is some of the upfront costs or in any way, is that going to diminish the need for such a large investment in some regards, or is that still going to be a requirement? always because of I, I guess the reason i'm bringing that up is that it seems if this investment is going to help reduce some of the upfront costs for some customers that might be something that may need to be communicated more broadly yeah so it'd be the it would be dependent upon where those nodes go but it could definitely lower the cost for them especially if they have line of sight so they wouldn't need the tower um, it sounds like that quote was given because of possibly the height of their home or where they're located, they might need a standalone tower that's tall enough to get above the trees. Because normally, right now, because of the cost of steel, the most expensive uh, tower for a TV tower with guy wires is about $3,000. So 10 sounding like a, a standalone option. But if there's a node within line of sight, then it would just be a standard, standard install or a lower tower that would cost uh, a lot less. So you're saying that you've never quoted anybody in White Lake a $10,000 tower? It's very, very rare that I quote uh, DMX towers. Okay. 
Okay, well, I, I just texted her to, to confirm the amount and she confirmed back. So maybe maybe that's something I I can ask her to circle back on. Because I'm looking at the location, I think they would be pointed, I'm looking at the map you have right now, I think they would have to point to that WL3, if I'm correct, if I, so across from hardwood. But anyways, that was a number that she's, I just reconfirmed with her, so. I think we'd love to see that quote, to see, to see what kind of a tower she was being quoted, and then we can take a look at what exactly it, it takes to get to the location that that uh, she's trying to get things worked on. You know, we're not we're not actually in the tower game. We're in the internet game. We happen to provision towers because that gets people their internet. It's not that we're trying trying to um, be in the tower business. Um, in fact, no, I, no, I, under, I understand that. I guess I guess my point is is that well, at least there's one circumstance I'm aware of where somebody's completely discounted storm as, as, as somebody they're going to use um, because of that high upfront cost. Now, if something that you're going to do is going to reduce that, that should be more made, a, people should be made aware of. She would not be on this call because she just feels that I'm going to have to pay $10,000. So what's the use of me even discussing my needs with storm? So we do, for the site surveys that end up in situations like that, where there's towers needed or there's absolutely no service as an option, we do keep that information on file and that will also go towards what we're looking at with the new nodes and and where they go so that we can determine where we can get more customers or the ones that request faster speeds. So so everything's documented so that we know where everyone is. And the other piece that's that's useful, that was the Black Star program we talked about earlier. And another thing that's useful to know is uh, we've recently authorized Jason um, to put tower payment plans together. So if somebody doesn't have, you know, the, the, uh, let's say 1,500 to $2,000 for a tower in, in their piggy bank, um, they could actually split the payments over a period of time. And Jason's authorized it to uh, put those de- those deals together. Um, all right, so this is what we know, people. There's 31 of you that have actually asked. So Glenn Scott, you were right. There are 31 people, but only 17 are full time. Um, so then the other pieces are, uh, um, we needed to figure out who's in, in the uh, Lake Association. Um, we'll uh, prepare a survey and, and we'll get it sent out. No, one, uh, one per, per residence or cottage. Um, we don't want multiple entries for it. Um, and what we'd be looking at is we'll aggregate all the data and, and see where it is and how much we would have to pay to upgrade what, what areas. Because part of it is you're not all in one area. You're, you're scattered around. The other thing is if the campground owners are willing to put in a, a, a one and a half inch conduit, we're willing to provide the conduit so that we can provide better internet within the within the, the campgrounds because campgrounds are tricky because there's trees in the way. But we know how to run fi- uh, fibers or cables down, down under the ground and then pop them up to make access points happen. So we can build, uh, a, you know, a group of trailers in the back of the park can get access where they couldn't before because they only had a shoreline antenna. So those kinds of things can change. And so we will look to see how many people we can actually connect because obviously if we connect more of you, it, it uh, gives us a, a faster payback on all the work we're going to have to do to make this happen. And, and we do take uh, working with communities seriously and collaborating. So we are looking for this. And what we'll do is we'll figure out what the costs are. We'll be transparent with you. We'll tell you what it's going to cost. We'll uh, show you what we think our return on investment ought to be. And then if people decide they're going to commit, we'll, we'll uh, take deposits. And uh, once we get to the commitment threshold, we'll uh, put a schedule together and we'll start building wireless upgrades and, and connecting customers. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, um, you know, I, I don't know if uh, all the residents or sort of st- normal people know all of the funding available from the government, but I'm sure that you guys look at all that funding and because uh, we don't meet the government uh, 25.5 mandated fast internet speed. And uh, is there, I guess the question is, is there a potential that there's funding available to help us out if the numbers warrant? There's a couple of answers on that. Um, yes, we do monitor funding. Uh, secondly, the, the province of Ontario has got a program that they're currently looking at, but, but they made it so that uh, even though we qualified to be a, an ISP working on it, they, they uh, have made certain conditions um, that, you know, so for us, the area that we'd like to do is about 1.6 million. For us to be able to do that, they want $800,000 as a cash bond. And of course, no small business, because we're only a $10 million business, no small business ha- has the ability to put $800,000 on the side in a cash bond um, in order to be able to bid, let alone be able to win. 
So yeah. that's, they basically made it so that only the big guys can play. I am talking with your warden because uh, you may know the mayor of Perth is now the warden for Lanark County. I don't know how much of uh, White Lake is in Lanark County, but I assume a lot of it is. So I am talking with John Fenwick and uh, we, we are talking about uh, ways of getting funding to be able to assist, but these things typically take six months to a year before any funding comes forward. There's no such thing as a magic piggy bank. Okay, thanks. I mean, some of us um, everything and, probably think there's money, but yeah, it's harder to get well, than well, we and, and the other thing that is, even when we do get money, the other thing that uh, that people don't realize is that when, when we got some money to do to, to do the things in, in Leonard County last year, we for the first time, because all the stuff we did up in Clayton prior to that was done on our own dime. The money we got last year, you know, basically we pay 60% and the government pays 40. So we're, yes. we're investing to be able to put things in. It's not like it's, it's free money. I mean, you really have, yeah. you have to run a project, you have to staff it, you have to, you, you have all the supply chain issues that happened with, with the uh, pandemic have not been helpful, but we're, we're overcoming them. In fact, our back room looks really full right now, which is really good. Lots of things ready for the build. To go back to the survey, most people in our lake are not aware of the understanding of internet and streaming and this, that, and the other. So if you could provide just a little bit of a 101, if you're getting a 10-1 service, can you stream? What type of grade of service would you be getting? If you're going to do your 25.5 or something like that, how many users would it support? And then with that, they need to understand what the pricing would be. And a lot of people now would be moving, say, towards unlimited. And that yeah. will help them make their decision as to whether they want to commit to, to something like that. Absolutely. Good point. In our in our most recent uh, community uh, presentations where we're doing a specific project where we knew the costing, um, we were able to put those kinds of things in a matrix and put it in front of people so they know Here's, here's what we're providing to your community. These are your options. These are your prices. So, but here we, it's, it's a wild card because, you know, right off the top, Chris Rankler said, you'll need $300,000 to do that. You know, he was just taking a wild, uh, what we call a DRE, direct rectal extraction, so that we could actually figure out what it actually cost to, to do this project. And, and he was thinking that you might have to upgrade three towers or put put a couple of new towers in upgrade one. So those kinds of things are things that, you know, uh, you know, honestly, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to actually solve the community problem and understand what it's actually going to cost so we can actually do the math on what's it going to take. Our property is uh, just north of the uh, fire station on the lake. And we did a, I think we, yeah, we talked to Storm uh, about it. And they, because I heard, or I heard that the, uh, the tower was at the fire station. I said, oh, fabulous. That's going to be great. And of course the trees. So uh, we're we're very close. Like you get it's almost a, a, a stone's throw away from the tower, but we can't get any because of, we can't get the service because of the the foliage. So I would definitely be in favor of of that idea of having it across the across the lake. And ha I think it's a good idea. Whoever the gentleman was before that said, you know, lake getting receiving it the signal from the lake it would be the best for everybody because everybody has some kind of a view of the of the water and that would be wonderful and i guess that's the zed you're talking about going back and forth because you have two sides of the lake i understand anyway uh, in the survey if 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 that's put as an option i would de definitely be uh, the, the option of the zeds you know so that we could receive the signal from the lake if that was part of the uh survey i'd be, I appreciate it otherwise it's not wouldn't be useful for us thank you yeah, yeah so it's all about line of sight so uh, you can see the other the other shoreline from your shoreline and there's a node there and like one of the ladies was saying earlier uh, that's not uncommon that we bring a wire from your house over to your lakefront to put uh, the radio on a little pole in the cement or or even on a tree. Uh, it's not uncommon that we do installs like that. So that's the goal is to see how we can get line of sight without having to go 100 feet over the beautiful pine tree. So two quick comments. Number one, thank you for put, pulling this together. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, number two, I'm one of those customers where I did mount my pizza box on the lakeside and it took me 10 minutes to trench a little cable to the house, but it's probably about 150 feet from the house, but at least I've got line of sight to the tower. But number three, I wanted to point out, I think it's really important. I'm, I love your survey. I can cert I know the owners of Cedar Cove. I can make sure they can blast it out to their owners. I know you say seasonal guests are only half year, but if you get 50 of them for a half year, that's almost like 25 for a full year. My one final, I guess, piece is, I know lots of people, I'm very active on the White Lake Owners Property 
property association and a lot of people are switching providers and ser- searching for alternatives. So if Bell actually is successful in putting in their wireless home internet because they upgraded Windy Point Tower to support it, I think Storm lo- or is at risk of losing all of their customers because other providers. So it's just one of those caveats where I'm more than willing to help contribute more than willing to pay more per month, but the 25 meg, I'd love to pay for the 50 meg. And like I said, I'm willing to pay for Starlink. Starlink is $700 to buy the equipment. Starlink is $150 a month to have service. So those are the numbers we're talking about. So I'm paying 90 today. If you can give me 50 meg, hey, I'll pay you a hell of a lot more. That's it um, for my comments. Thank you. And again, thanks very much for pulling this together. and really appreciate it and listening to us. No, we're not just here to listen. We're to, here to see if we can solve the problem and do it we understand about the fact that we're, we would be at risk. Um, and we do want, you know, since, since the place was built over a dozen years ago, there are new options that weren't there back when it was being built originally. And so, you know, Michelle has new construction things he can do. Andreas has new radios he can bring to the game. And, uh, and you know, it, it, Jason Riddick knows how to go twist camp, campground owners' arms so that we can actually get uh, the campground owners to do things like put in put in a conduit so we can feed the people at the back of the uh, the area. I just want to add on to Glenn's. Um, I dealt with a, uh, a Bell uh, hub on the for a person on the lake who had problems, and my God, it was the worst experience in my life trying to get Bell support. I mentioned in my first comment that I love phone and storm pressing option two or three and talking to a person within a couple of minutes. That's very important to me. So I just yeah. wanted to give you a kudo. Um, so this is where we were actually going to ask the questions right after that. So um, I really want to thank everybody for, for spending some time with us this, this afternoon or this evening rather, and taking time out of your evening to, to do things. Um, you know, we, we really do care about our customers. We, uh, you know, that's probably obvious in our customer support, but it's all obviously um, in, in all of the uh, attitudes of all of our, our employees, they're, they're really the right people in the right seat trying to make stuff happen. So that's an important piece. And, uh, and we appreciate uh, all the, uh, the, the nice Google reviews you guys have put up. So where we are is we need to understand the need via survey. We need the, the uh, White Lake Property Owners Association um, to, to get those surveys out for us and figure out where the, where um, the upgrades are desired and what kind of upgrades, and then we can uh, figure out, you know, who's willing to put some money in to help those upgrade happens. Then our CFO will do the um, return on investment calculations, and then Storm will present the results back to the association. We'll hold another another uh, uh, community update like this, just to make sure that you all see what's going on. So I I, I just had a uh, I think and the. Uh, the services that Bell have uh, ongoing right now, uh, the Windy Point Tower was recently upgraded, and you know, so I guess the big concern is is time is of the essence. Uh, otherwise, you know, Bell is going to take over the the market. What sort of time frame are you looking at to do the survey, do your return on investment calculations, and get things? kind of wrapped up so decisions can actually be made and a plan put in place to go forward. Because I think when, if you have that kind of information and that kind of information can be shared with people, they're more likely to hold off switching over to this new uh, home Wi-Fi, whatever service it is that Bell's uh, slowly rolling out um, or Starlink or whatever. Um, Like if people know there is a you know a date or a timeline they're more likely to be on board with all that so, so, is so tony, there the good, tony the good news is it's a matter of weeks um you know we're, we're basically we can have a survey done sometime into next week and 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 uh, ready to assuming that soon would be good to go um you know we're we're small we're agile we're going to make this happen it's not going to be a long time. I mean, we, we believe in being, being agile and getting things done. And we know how important this is to the community. And, uh, and, and honestly, that's why we do this, because people ask. That's what's going on. But and, we do uh, need more people to let us know, too. So if you know anyone that wants faster or wants service that couldn't get it, to have them reach out to me. Just call our office and go to extension 240. 
and that that will catch Jason Riddick, who's who's in in charge of sales here for residential sales, and he will help organize you into a black star on our map. We uh, we really do want it. We'll get this out in the next week or so to the campground association, and uh, we'll. Uh, We'll uh, get get this in and done. Just a quick note uh, to say that there's a couple associations around the lake. We're part of a smaller one, but we will put out the word and we'll get in touch with uh, Jason. So thank you very much again, gentlemen, uh, for spending the time with us this evening and uh, collecting our thoughts. Thanks. In your survey, um, in the uh, bullet points you had on what you were going to ask us, uh, the term upgrade was a bit confusing. Um, you shouldn't assume people know anything. So okay. we we wouldn't know what an upgrade was. So right. just word, word it for uh, for neophytes, if you don't mind. So, so if you need, if you feel the need for speed, here's how you get it. Um, we'll include a one pager that says these are the kinds of things you might need to know, um, so that you can actually, you know, if you're trying to run one Netflix, it's this. If you're trying to run two Netflix and a video call at the same time, it's this. So we have estimates on that kind of thing um, that we use in some of our standard community presentations, and we'll make sure we bring them back when we present the results. Um, we've used our hour and five minutes. I just wanted to say thank you for all to all of you for spending your evening with us.